Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. This particular build we're going to be doing is the Eddard MiG 29A. Now, this is the single seat fulcrum. Um, two things to need to know about this kit. First of all, it's not one of theirs, it's a Reeboks, which we've become used to with all their extra goodies in there, things like that. What this actually is, is the Academy 148 scale kit um, with all the Ed R goodies. So if you wanted to do a straightforward out the box build, you're far better going with the Academy kit. And to be honest, it's quite a bargain. It's usually around about sort of the 15 pound mark here in the UK. So versus something like this kit, which I think was about, about 30 pounds. But if you're gonna do all the extras, you're better off getting this kit because it all comes with and works out a little bit cheaper. Now we've already done an inbox review on this on the news site, so we're just going to whip through this quickly. That's uh, <clears throat> the usual very nice box. As we imagine, we've done some of these before if you've seen them, but if not, we've got some very nice information, background information, and the markings are absolutely excellent. So basically, when you come through here, down here on this page here, you're going to get a list of the resin parts that you're going to need to use, um, and the bits that you're going to be sort of transferring, because obviously this will have the original parts in it as well. And then as you go through, it calls out down here with these little labels to say where you're going to be replacing them. So just keep an eye out as you go through and look out for these labels, and it will make things a lot easier. Certain things, obviously, Obviously like cockpits and stuff like that it's going to be straightforward replacement with theirs but obviously you've got a lot of photo etch parts so just as you make your way through the build it's not a particularly complicated build this one but there's lots of changes which are going to have to be made one of the lovely things with all the Eddard kits to be honest is their markings they really do go beyond the call of duty for some of these markings here now the one we're going to be doing because it's the old classic is we're going to be doing the two-tone gray, uh, gray green scheme which is quite nice because it's got a shark's mouth on it and if you know any of my builds you know I'm quite fond of doing those but if you're not into that we've got the standard type of two-tone grey greens and then we've got the other one so you've got some very nice Czech ones down here for the Czech Republics and some of those very nice dark colours those dark browns and greens and the sands which are very very nice to do or as you say then you can come along to the more modern scheme when they were sort of um, but you're being used by Poland in that standard um, sort of two-tone grey the very light greys with the dark gunship grey backs and things like that. Or, as I say, you've got something a little bit different down here, which is the uh, the actual one for the Iranian Air Force. So that's quite nice to do with your Iran, uh, Iran colours, with the sands on the top and everything else. So going through the kit itself, it's recessed panel lines, which are going to be great for weathering, but it's very basic. And that has always been the, the trouble with the kit. It's almost been there. It's been a great kit to do uh, in the past, but it's just been a little bit basic and has needed a few little extras. So in this case, with the little extras, what we're going to be using is a set of aftermarket nozzles with this particular one. And uh, we've got a replacement nose to go on the front. Now, the nose itself isn't too much of a problem. Um, and to be honest, it's not here at this precise second to show you. But as soon as it turns up, I'll show you. Um, but the trouble with it is it's just a a little bit of a funny shape on the end now if you're a little bit of a nitpicker you might want to change it if you're just not too worried about it you could get away with it it's not one of those must do type areas but itself it goes together as you say recessed panel lights and raised detail it's pretty much straightforward now the interesting bit with the actual kit um, this is the follow on instruction so you're obviously going to get a mask set in it so this shows you about masking up the wheels um, and obviously with the actual uh, main screen and the canopy itself things like that and then obviously we've got a decal sheet here for all the call outs for all the different colours I keep on saying about these and it's nice to see companies are doing it now they actually staple the clear sheet to protect the decals underneath because all too often they slip off and get scratched and all so but beautifully done um, you know actual decals down there very very nice this is limited edition one so as I said as future references come along with this they might be slightly different but they do look nice and the other thing as well the reds are slightly faded back so it's not like brand new stuff so the interesting part is these. Now these are the actual mask set which you get in the kit. We've got photo etch fret, so we've got lots of photo etch parts. Some of these are for the engine, so you could get away with just updating the engine. But what is nice, we've got a full color fret just here. Uh, and with that, that'll detail the cockpit up very, very nicely with the instrument panel and everything else like that. Moving into the resin areas, and this is where it does get exciting, we have down here various chaff and flare dispensers around the back end and around the tail. Uh, these are the leading edges that comes off of the rudders at the back for the tail so it swoops forward. So we've got a better set of them. We've got some nice red tops for the missiles and things like that. And a, a few little veins down in here. This is the nice bit. Now this is the tub. Now it's a strange way of doing it because it's a mix of resin and photo etch parts. So as you might be able to see in here, 
it's quite nicely detailed. It will come together very, very nicely. And because it's not an overall solid resin tub to pop in, we will be able to use some of this nice coloured photo etch to really bring it to life. So if you're not brilliant with painting, you don't have to worry about it too much. Ejection seat, we've used in a few of their models now, which are always very nice. It's a standard type thing. And some more of the actual uh, lumps and bumps on the aircraft, some of the vanes and stuff like that. And again, again, we've got down here, we've got some nice things. Nice little touches with these, and also you get the helmet, the flying helmet, which obviously you can have if you're having the cockpit open, just sat on the side of the aircraft and things like that. As I said, it's a straightforward kit to build if you're doing it straight out of the box like this, okay? We're only adding two little extras to it, as in the nose and the exhaust, which are pretty straightforward. They'll be done sort of separately as we go along. But as I say, it should be a lovely build, so let's get on with it. Okay, so to start off with, obviously we're going to work in the cockpit. So we've got the first part of the actual cockpit tub cut out and cleaned out. So obviously you get a couple of sprues down here and pegged out. Now there's a couple of things you need to do with this as well. A couple of little modifications. To start with, you need to take off the front part of the HUD, the little bars at the top. So that's easy, they literally push out. The other one, we've got to take out this little box right at the back. Now there's lots of different ways to do this type of surgery to it. You know, you could use, this is looking for my slightly smaller saw. <coughs> We've got little saws. Um, this is the little trumpeter one, which is great for this type of works. It's quite small. So what you can do, you can just place it in and get in there and cut little things like this out. And you can see where they're coming from. Now, if you haven't got a little saw like this, which is sort of ideal with it, obviously you've got bigger ones, but you can't really get in. It's a bit chopping it around. The other way you can do it is literally just keep scoring it very gently with a knife. So literally quite an old blade Okay, and then just keep scoring at it. And so you're literally slicing it off from the top. I'm gonna to do it from here, but this is what it's great, because you can get these little blades in here. Now this one's made by Trumpeter. Okay, but you can literally pop it in quite level. Okay, and it's not a quick hack it off job, but as soon as it cuts through like that, it doesn't take long to hack him off. just like so and then once you've got it off you can come along with the little files and just clean it up nicely so it's just all level and if you have gone over now on this there is a slight slant on it as well so we'll just sand into that there we go but you can see it's not a a problem to do it if you've got the right tools. If you had a knife, it would take quite a while to do it. But you can just go off like that and then pop in with a sponge just for a bit of a clean up. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be too clean to be honest in here because what will happen is that We've got a photo edge part, it's going to go over the edge. But there we go, that's that box cut in. I say that front one off. So that's the surgery to that area. Now, the other thing as well, get rid of this, is where we're dealing with the tub. Now, the tub itself has a, a block which goes on the bottom, which I've already cut off, which is right here. Now, obviously, all we do, literally, same thing again with a little saw, and we just cut it off. Just remember, resin, not nice. You don't want to be breathing it in or certainly getting it on your hands. So once you've done, wipe down your areas with a damp cloth. Little things as well, when you're cutting out resin, don't assume everything's 45 degrees. If you look at this guy just here, you can see we're at an angle and it's shallower than 45. Uh, it's not like a, a 90 degree straight down, it's not 45, we're somewhere in between. It's more like a 35 degree angle. So again, we're going to use our little guy here and we're just going to let it follow its way through. I'd say normally you take your time and, and things like this, but. go through but again this resin dust isn't nice so I just get rid of that this little saw is great because you get different types of blades on there but again just a quick polish up taking the edges off again we're going to get rid of the resin dust out of the way I'm going to be and to be honest, I've got a little tiny mini hoover, which is great for hoovering up this stuff as you're cutting it you can have it running and obviously it gets rid of that noise so that was those bits done. And if we just take our glue. So what I've got here, to be honest, is an extremely old thick 
um, glue. Now this is normally very very runny and you'll see it go everywhere, you see it in lots of my other ones. But this one here is a very thick, it's more like a gel. The only thing to it is, is it needs a cocktail stick to get this stuff out because it is very very thick and gooey. So if we just anchor it off. <clears throat> the other one you can use, as we get it here, let me just show you this one, is this stuff as well. Now this is uh, Flexi Bond, which is the thing, clears go uh, completely clear, but it's got a little bit of flexibility in it, which is quite nice when you're dealing with resin parts, because sometimes they just bash in. But this one goes to the back. So we just let this run down. I have not used this one for a while. Thick. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Just a little bit. We don't want to get it in so you've got too much. Otherwise, what it does, it squishes out. And then this back part goes onto here. And it sits down just on the edge. And it fits in there just like so. So that gives you your back of your cockpit tub, just like so. Pretty straightforward so far, very, very easy to do. So just pop that on for a second. So what we need to do now is go round and have a look really how the instructions are gonna go and how it's gonna follow. Now we've got lots of color photo etch parts and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take our time with this and uh, not gonna rush into it. I'm gonna let that bit dry, then we can paint this up, then we can come along and certainly we can go through and get some more parts done. So the other thing we need to do is fill in this lump at the front. So we might as well do it slightly the old fashioned way. Sometimes you'll see I'll go in there with super glues and stuff like that with this type of thing. But for this one, on all I'll see I'm just gonna use a little bit of green putty. We just push this up, grab a bit. Okay, and we'll push this in here and let it go off naturally. So we're not going to go around pushing it down or anything else like that. We're just going to let it sit on the top just like that and can go off. And because we've got time on our side, it doesn't matter. Then afterwards, obviously, we can go over it with thin glues and various things and putties and that to really smooth it down and make it nice. So that's those just bits done. So we're just going to let those dry off and then we can get them painted. Okay, so one of the nice little touches you can do this one is to open up some of the little closed parts from this. Now, you might be able to see this one here. We've got all the intake vent shut because when you have the the main door underneath is closed opening up these top ones so the air goes in when it's taxing on the ground so but the thing is the kit part as you can see it has them all totally closed so it's not particularly good now originally to be honest I had stuck this in and to open up these I went one at a time right the way through and it's taken best part of an hour just to do that so speeding it up slightly <coughs> one thing I thought about doing was actually cutting the actual parts open. Now there's two ways to do this. Obviously we've got to be a little bit careful how we go. But what I'm thinking is, is just to come along, okay, and make a cut down there and down there. And then we want to cut the actual part itself. So it can still go up the top Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to take a little razor saw and we're just going to back cut the inside. Okay, so it gives us a nice flat cut to work with. So hopefully we'll go something like this and all we can do is just bend it slightly and then cut it off. And then that way we've still got it able to fit in. So what we need to do now is just sand this small area down the back. So for that we can literally just take our sanding stick and just literally sand it out okay and then we can cut down right to where we need to go and we're making minimal damage absolutely everywhere whereas by before when I did it I was drilling it out and cutting down each one at a time so then this one can come along go up to the front like here Okay, a bit of thin glue, and we just glue it back in place. Okay, now it needs a little bit of clearing up and cleaning up and everything as we go. Ideally, not doing that. <clears throat> but that's our first one in. 
and then obviously what we can do we can then then scoop down the back one which is obviously this one here so then two ways of doing it you can either take a little blade off of your knife and just scoop it out or again sanding stick and we can just sand it down with a little thin sanding stick across the bit Taken off here. <clears throat> Obviously, you've got a little bit more time, you can speed up a bit. So, if we just do sand them out, <clears throat> let me just roughly show you for the minute. Corners. and then hopefully <clears throat> when you come along for your next one it will go in something like that so you might be able to see it on the camera and it has it completely opened up nice and clean so by cutting them and then working your way through you should end up with quite a nice section so if we just cut the next one so that one's going to be down here and as long as you make sure you cut the tabs nice and square so you've got each side of the tab that's cut fine Let me just bring it around a little bit but if they've been cut fine and then that way you should find they'll go pretty nicely so then on the back side again we'll just cut the top By cutting it like that you should find it will then click off so we can just clean out and scoop this one out pop it in and just work our way along by cutting and sanding and then just pop them all in. It's a lot easier because to be honest we've made quite a bit of a mess down on this edge doing it that way. Okay, but it should just cure that problem and make it neater. So I'm going to take my time, just clean them up, make them look nice. We can get the cockpit then, start to get it painted up, get it installed with all the photo etch parts and everything else. Okay, so that's those done, as you can see. Really liked it up. When you get it together, you'll really notice the difference. Well worth doing it. You're not going to see anything down there because it's going to be pitch black, but it will give you the effect that they're open. If you wanted to, there are aftermarket parts available for covers for over these because um, obviously they're quite fragile. So they've got like a no walk cover, which is hard, which goes right over the top of them so crews can walk up and down it without actually falling through. So anyway, next up we're going to be using H308 Neat. The reason for using it neat is because we're spraying onto resin, it will stick and it will dry immediately. So what we're going to do is take this out. Now this is H308 which is their equivalent to FS36375 which is obviously federal stone and as we know is not the correct colour for this one particularly but it's close enough. So using that rule of thumb of being close you're not really going to see it we can press on so what we're going to do is spray this inside now i've already put in the rudder pedals assembly in there it's literally a quick spray job this but what we're going to do is just come in from the sides a little bit from the front and make sure we're all done just like so at the same time i'm just going to spray the inside of the cockpit area purely just in case we get an overlap by an overlap i mean the resin doesn't quite cover so we're just doing that at the same time we're going to do these intakes so i can get a rough idea how they're going to look and see if they need any other things doing little things like that if you use a little bit of paint got a little bit left over you might as well spray it around and just see if there's any sort of nasty joints and seals and that as you go over you know might notice at the front as well where well, you can't really see it that well but what's happened is is that's the actual color um it's been put over with a little bit of mr surfacer just over the front there so it shows through so what we do, we pop that in. We're going to let that dry off now for the sort of next 10 minutes. Once that dry, then obviously what we can do is start getting the photo etch parts into it, and then eventually we can install it into our tub, which will be something like this. Okay, so we've done a little bit of work down here in the cockpit. You see a couple of little placards on there, but nothing exciting. You see, it's a bit of a grey pit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now there's one way of getting rid of that. Now this is Indian ink. Um, this is made by a company called Talons Indian Ink. All it is is a tiniest amount just with water. And then 
in there just like that. What you can do is take some of this stuff. Now this is, you've probably seen this before, I use it in a lot of the builds, it's um, the acrylic flow improver. It just basically stops your airbrush from gumming up when it's really hot weather. So what I'm going to do is just take a few drops of this in a pipette, okay, and add it to our paint off wash like that. The right lid for the right one might help. Okay, close it up, give it a bit of a shake about. <clears throat> and what that'll do, it just helps it flow. It just makes it, breaks down the capillary action and makes it flow absolutely everywhere. Now taking a reasonably clean brush, all we're gonna do is pop some on the end of the brush, okay? And then literally just gonna touch and flow and let it go around all the areas. So we're not trying to paint the entire area, if you know what I mean. All we're trying to do is liven it up. So we're just gonna pop down everywhere. And what I'll do is I'll do one side and then show you compared to the other side. So okay, what it does, it dries quite quick and it just gives you this type of grubby look but because it gets in all the nooks and crannies and everything else like that. When you see it like that, pretty plain, pretty boring and on the other side, it's nicely done. Now it doesn't take long to dry either this stuff so don't worry too much but literally just come along and brush it and you'll notice it will just find its way absolutely everywhere. And you just give it that nice grimy look, cling to all the the areas. Let's say it does dry very, very quickly. And when it dries, it dries a little bit lighter. So it's just the fastest, quickest way you could ever give anything a wash like that. And what it does, where if you used to use a, um, perhaps use a little bit of black paint, acrylic paint, it goes a little bit gritty. This stuff maintains its its way, if you like, without having that grittiness. And also it just cleans up water. Once Indian ink's dry, it's permanent though. So if you are a little bit worried about what you're using it on, by all means, perhaps use something like our wash, the black wash, something like that. But just for something, just to liven it up and make it look a little bit grubby, that's the ideal, very, very quick fix solution. Now, the other thing we wanna do, just as we're here, gotta make two little nicks in the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna place the cockpit where they are, okay? And I'm just going to mark with a knife to the outsides of each area. So we have one there, and one there, and hopefully when we take this away we can see them. Okay, so I'm just going to use the saw blade and make a little in gap without doing that, ideally. <clears throat> okay. There's one. And I'm thinking that's the second. Just in here. So just hold that up just to make it a bit easier. So we're pushing away, not dragging back. Just for the moment, just so we're in. And we can check our, to make sure we've got that right. Yep, pretty happy how that's gonna go. So what we're doing, we'll just make those a little bit bigger now so we can drag up and push down. Okay, we might just have to open them up a little bit, so we just use the blade of a knife just to cut down, cut towards the outside, but just trying to keep it square. And then we just test fit this guy in here. And there's our cockpit that will sit up in here. Very nice. No problem with that at all. And in fact, it's a nice little tight fit. So what we want to do is to bring it right up 
to the top of the sides. Now obviously we've got instrument panel, all sorts to go in there, but it's just a little thing to see if it fits uh, at this point, which it does, which is somewhat amazing because all too often we use Aries bits and pieces like that. <clears throat> But Eddard stuff does tend to fit, so it's a nice good fit for this particular kit. So now we can move on to the actual cockpit instrument panel itself. So I'm going to get the instructions out here. I say when you're cutting out photo edge, try and keep it flat. I know a lot of people do it on a hard board, but all I do is nick the tips of the scissors onto the photo edge parts. And the nice thing with these frets is you've got a little bit of room to manoeuvre. So we should be able to make these nice clean cuts. So we're just popping these around. Just like so. Just one somewhere, that's it. Okay, so this is the back one. Now, if you look at the back of photo etch parts, you might be able to see, catch it in the light, you get the lines down the back. Now there are guides for folding, because obviously this needs to be folded up. <laughs> So I've got some Tamiya folding pliers. Now folding pliers are dead flat on the inside. You know, there's no teeth to them that are gonna mark it. And also you've got 45 degree bends on the outside. Now I'm just gonna move you out because trying to show you inside is a bit of a, a nightmare. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna place it to the first one and fold down. Okay, then we're gonna fold back the other half. And that gives us our little step that we need very hard to see okay but basically you can do it by hand as well if you want to what i'm going to do there just to adjust it a little bit again 90 degrees and then again another 90 degrees full out and that should give you little edge just like that so you see you get a little step so it's actually curving in nice easy one this one okay and then obviously we've got the instrument panel itself now there's a little couple of tips you can do with this which is the one i'm going to use i like to use a pva glue for settling this down now i know a lot of people use super glue uh, and things like that but if you use a pva glue two things will happen firstly it will give you a nice area and glossy look to the instruments that are below it. Secondly, you can move it around without any problem. So I've got here some Gator glue. You could use, if you wanted to, some Crystal Clear. Now this is uh, micro industry stuff, okay? This one will dry totally Crystal Clear as well, but so will Gator glue, and Gator glue, I just find it a little bit easier to work with. So we just pop that out. Bit on the old cocktail stick. <coughs> okay, and then all we're gonna do it's just going to wipe it across all the faces of the instruments all the way over okay then we're going to take our instruments because what will happen is when this dries hopefully it will give us a nice glossy look and it will make the instruments look like they've got panels on then comes the tricky bit of just lining it all up so all your dials are in the right places and everything else like that. Now at the moment they're all a little bit cloudy, but hopefully we'll come back when this is all dry and it should all be in position, but that will give you a, a rough look of what we've got. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave that to the side just for one moment, just to go off. We're gonna fold up the other part. So on the instructions, you can see up here, we've got to do the top bit of the panel. So we've done this lower part here. Now we've got to do the top one. So we'll get those ones together. 